Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad welcoming you to another malware analysis video. In today's video, I collected uh, a EML file, I mean the email file from an online forum and it was containing some suspicious spooky sample, a file and uh, I'm going to analyze that specific file and we together going to learn what that specific piece of file is doing whenever it is getting triggered. So without further ado, let's begin. It is always recommended to analyze malwares on a VM or any isolated environment. So in our case, I'm going to use a Linux distribution called Remnux. And the Remnux is a Linux distribution specially designed for malware analysis. So it already contains all the utilities required. We already saved it and the file is zip archive. And we already seen the password, it is 2527. So we can unzip this file with 7z utility, 7z, x for extract and qrtz.zip. So that, that is the command, enter. It is asking for the password, the password is 2527. Now, we successfully uncompressed the file. We already unzipped the file. So if I give ls, I can see the file here. So let's see. So this is the file we unzipped. So let's see what sort of file it is. And it is Microsoft Excel 2007. Um, you may ask, it is not an Excel file or any, any sort of executable file. It is simply an Excel file what sort of uh, dangerous stuff hidden inside this file? It's a valid question. Threat actors often use Microsoft Office documents to carry their malware. So this document must be carrying some malware. So let's try to analyze that. But uh, you cannot, uh, I mean, you should not simply open this file with uh, an Office uh, application. Instead, there are certain tools that you may use to analyze uh, these sort of uh, MS Office files. And the tool set is called OLE tools. If I click OLE and tab, I already installed uh, the OLE files uh, here, I mean, OLE applications here in this distribution. So OLE is nothing but object linking and embedding. Uh, it is a, a technique involved in this Microsoft Excel 2007 plus document. Actually, uh, if you see this document is uh, a single file, but Actually, the Excel document or, or any sort of MS Office document is uh, it's a it's a directory. It's a file system actually. Uh, to explain it in a clear way, let me explain. Uh, I think I need to rename this file. So not moving. I'm copying this file into some other name, like uh, how can I say sample dot zip. I'm just converting this Excel SM file into zip file. And uh, let me check its file type. Uh, the file is still Microsoft Excel 2007. So if I use three utility within this sample.zip, I can see nothing, but I can unzip this sample.zip. So let me unzip it. I unzipped it, but you can see here, there are multiple files within this sample.zip. So let's apply the tree command within this sample. Dot... Hold on a moment. Actually, I should have unzipped this sample.zip and kept everything in a single folder. So let me do that. Now let me unzip this file and put all those unzipped content inside a single folder. In order to do that, I'm using unzip utility and hyphen QQ to quiet the operation and hyphen D to put everything inside uh, a folder called sample and also the file that I need to unzip. Now I did that. The folder sample is created. It's a folder and uh, 
if i open the folder called sample it contains all these uh, folders and files so let me put, uh, show it in the tree utility so so if you see you can find here a folder sample contains a directory structure it looks like a file system uh, here so a sample directory it is simply a converted xlsm file so you, with this you can understand every ms office file is a group of files uh, it's a it's a it's a file sandwiched together within a directory like that like that you can keep it in mind so we need to uh, use the OLE tools to find whether this Excel SM is carrying any other uh, malicious stuffs with uh, you know in it. Uh, before that, you can see the extension here Excel SM. So let's browse about that extension. Google is your best companion, so use that. Uh, Excel SM is the file extension that is assigned to spreadsheets created by Microsoft Excel 2010 and newer. Uh, they are saved using open XML standard, just like older version of the Excel spreadsheet. Excel SM files can contain tables and worksheets. And th this is what we have seen uh, you know, here with the tree command. Can contain tables and worksheets. So th these are the worksheets and the tables, and you can find here uh, the files with .xml extension. Uh, another properties of this XLSM file is it contains at least one XML file within a directory. So this is one thing you can keep it in mind. And apart from that, the Excel yes M the the letter M denotes macros. Uh, you need to understand what is macros here. Macros are certain programming capabilities used by uh, Office documents. So with this, with that capability, you can, I mean, uh, those macros can perform certain automated operations on those uh, those Office documents. Uh, but uh, threat actors uh, often use these macros to carry or uh, to hide their malwares within that. So this might be one of such documents carries some notorious things. So let's try to uncover that. Um, in order to do that, I'm using a tool called OLE BBE. Uh, let me let me try OLE ID first. OLE ID QRTZ.276 XLSM. So if I use OLE ID utility on that file, it gives me OLE format false. Uh, actually, the file is uh, not an OLE format. It is OOXML, Open Office XML format. Uh, so uh, OLE ID might not be the correct application to to you know to to apply against this file. So let's try with other tools. Uh, this time, I'm using OLE dir. Let's try that. OLE dir. QRTZ276 XLSM. OLE directory entries in the file. At the end, it gives me the error. So let me use other tool called OLE BBE against the application. Um, here is the spooky stuff. I opened the file with OLE VBA by using the utility, and it gives these many stuffs. These are all nothing but Visual Basic Script. Visual Basic Script is a programming language created by Microsoft, and it is being used by Microsoft Office documents. 
And if I see this tabular column at the bottom, here I can see certain entities that, that appears to be suspicious. And the keyword contains workbook open. Actually, uh, this entire table explains uh, the, the suspicious things present in this above program. And if I look the, if I look at this, there is a keyword workbook open, runs when Excel workbook is opened, auto execution. And the next keyword is open, may open the file, suspicious often, of course. And the keyword output may, out, may write to a file um, combined with open. So it is again suspicious and print hash. This is also suspicious, spooky stuff. And there is another keyword create object, may create an OLE object and CHR. So these are all the suspicious uh, behavior, suspicious, uh, you know, the strings present in that document. And uh, there are certain hexadecimal strings found and also some of the base 64 strings found. So base 64, uh, it's, it's a encoding, encoding technique often used to hide some uh, spooky things by malware actors. And I can also use one more thing here along with the OLE VBA to decode certain things. I can use hyphen hyphen decode with the same command. So if I use that, I can see some additional entries added here. Uh, here I can see some hex string and uh, the given and also the description is here. Apart from that, I can see some base 64. These are the uh, few entries added once I use the hyphen hyphen decode. And there is another interesting utility. Uh, if you find, if you come across this uh, Excel or Office document with suffix M, you can apply, you can use this tool, OLE dump, OLE dump dot py against the document to find whether any macros present within the file. And if I click enter, it gives me this output and you may find the letters here to denote each and every entry a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 uh, actually these letters are nothing but data streams actually uh, we have already seen in our windows uh, episode every file must be containing at least one stream even uh, in this case an excel file must an excel file or any ms office file must contain at least one stream so these are the file streams involved and here you can see the letters with M. This is nothing but macros. Uh, here, uh, A13, 14, 15. These three streams contain macros. So this is the stream name actually. And uh, I already uh, showcased uh, the VBA, I mean VB script, uh, uh, you know, the code by using the OLE VBA tool and even uh, those code belongs to these three streams. And if you want to know the code that belongs to each and every stream, you can, you can use uh, a command called hyphen yes to represent the stream. And first I'm going to represent the stream 13 and click enter. Uh, it is giving me the stream, the specific stream in encoded uh, or in uh, hexadecimal format in, in, a, in a machine language. So it's a compiled format. So we can uh, you know, decompile this, a parameter called hyphen B. I'm gonna use the same thing for stream 13. Let's decompress this. I'm using hyphen B to decompress. When I click enter, I'm getting the decompressed VB script code. And similarly, Let's do for subsequent streams, 14 and 15. If I do for 14, I'm able to extract the visual basic script code. So this is the score, uh, code hidden behind the document. And uh, also I can extract code for 15. So here I'm having a different set of VB script code. So when I was using the OLE VBA utility, I was able to retrieve the VB script that belongs to all three uh, streams, uh, you know, in the same place. So OLE VBA hyphen hyphen decode and uh, Q XLSF, the file name. So let me put it in the 
a file called uh, db script dot dbs db script underscore underscore mail dot dbs so let me store it here Yeah, actually, it extracted the VB script from that Excel document. Now, let's try to open this VB script with the help of any text editor that you wish. Before that, let's try to find what sort of file it is restructured text file. So, now let's open it with Sublime Text. Uh, here we are. Uh, you can see at the beginning, uh, this is the file uh, name and the type is open XML and VBA macro. Here is the stream name. And this particular stream present within the Excel VBA project.bin file. So, as I said before, if you go here within the sample. The, the unzipped folder, there is a folder called Excel. So if you get in, here you can see the file VBA project.bin. So this is the file consists all those VB script macros. And that's what they're given here. And this is the stream name, OLE stream you can see here. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can also see the second stream and again, this is the file consists this stream as well. And uh, when I scroll down a little bit, I can see another stream. And this is the stream contains uh, the table and all those suspicious factors within the code. So now we need to analyze this code to detect what is the behavior of this file. So let's begin. Um, so this is the beginning. So let's begin with this. Here I can see, yeah, VBA script function and the function is with some random characters and they defined uh, a variable sales as long and is temporal variable name as boolean as double. So let's see whether uh, this particular function is called anywhere. The function is beginning here and it is ending here. So when I searched that function, I found the function called nowhere. So I think this might be a blob. So it is it does nothing uh, to say frankly. So we can simply comment it out. And let's move to the next one. Here you can see a keyword called sub. If you have no idea, get the help from Google. Sub in VB script. What is sub? Sub procedure. Sub is nothing but subroutine. Sub procedure is a series of VB script statement enclosed by sub and sub. So it begins with sub and ends with end sub. So this is where it ends and it, it, collect, it contains collection, collect, collection of uh, uh, operations or collection of sentences that perform an actions but don't return any value. So that is the main difference between a function and subroutine in the VB script. Subroutine doesn't return any value but function does. And a subprocedure can take argument, constants, variables, expressions that are passed by calling procedure. So let's see what it exactly does. And I'm also going to verify whether this subroutine is calling called somewhere. No, it doesn't have anything. Uh, seems to be uh, another blob of text. So it does nothing. Here, if you see, 
you can see the key, uh, keyword dim the dim keyword is used for assigning uh, variable you can see here variables declared using dim keyword at a procedure level are available only within the same procedure so it's a keyword to de uh, describe the variable and the, the variable name is str message as string db dbl sales as double and uh, ah as integer and within that they are using a function val the val function in vb script so don't hesitate to get the help from google so if you look what is val function in vb script uh, actually it is a function used to uh, get the numerical values alone from a string and that's what they gave here as well this example uses val function to return the numbers contained in the string so here you can see it simply returns the number present in the specific string and this is what about val function and uh, you can see some other uh, strings here the vb tab is nothing but backward backward slash r carriage return it's a, a carriage return character and uh, vb clrf uh, pardon me vb tab is nothing but backward slash t tab and uh, vb clrf uh, crlf is nothing but backward slash or carriage return so anyway this particular uh, hub is doing nothing so i'm gonna comment it out as this particular sub is called nowhere now let's go to the next one private sub workbook open so this is the keyword given as a suspicious factor so we need to uh, pay our attention here uh, to see what it exactly does so it it, is, it comes with private sub and that uh, you know sub can be classified as two types public sub and private sub if no keyword mentioned then it is public sub uh, like this uh, if the keyword mentioned it is private sub so within the private sub again they are defining the variable names as double string and double and again a constant they are defining with the specific value and uh, if you if you scroll to the bottom uh, they are doing some calculations like uh, some some switch case statement select case dbs sales so here the dbl sales here they define the value for dbl sales and for the first case if the dbl sales value is between 0 to this value then it does this one and if it is between 5000 and 9999 then it does this calculations uh, by the way in between you can see the character the operator colon it is nothing but continuation character uh, actually these two lines are different but since we added these two lines in a single line uh, we used this colon characters we can simply remove this colon and we can bring the second line in the new line and uh, here you can see there is a for statement for i equal to 1 to 2 uh, the dim value they defined so let's let's see what it is uh, i am simply going to replace the name here so control f i am using to search and control h to replace and i am going to replace it as variable 1 so let me name like this and i am replacing all four matching and the second variable again control f control h and this time i'm going to use the name variable 2 so control and let me open the excel that excel document with libreoffice i'm simply opening libreoffice as of now before loading the document in the LibreOffice, I simply opened the LibreOffice application to do certain pre-configuration because 
that file contain contains macros so i don't want that macros gets executed so in order to restrict that uh, you can go to tools and uh, here in options if you go to load and save option and vba properties you can see microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint so under this you can simply uncheck the executable code checkboxes so by default every checkboxes are checked and uh, we need to uncheck this executable code checkboxes so i am applying now i did that so now let me open the file from here and if i go to remnex fishy email uh, i can i can find this xlsm document and i am opening the document now you can see the error here uh, i mean the alert the warning this document contains macros macros may contain viruses execution of macros is disabled due to current macro security settings in tools options libreoffice security so this is what i have just did therefore some functionality may not be available it's okay totally okay to me and uh, we just loaded the xlsm file in libreoffice and you can see uh, the the message here this message is simply an image this document is only available for desktop it's, it is simply uh, an image here so let's go to the code once again and here we are the first function is cell function is 1066 actually the variable one is uh, will, i mean the va variable one is being read from uh, cells 1066 so we need to move to that specific cell row 1066 column 6 so let's move there if i go row 1 to row 1066 and column 6 2 3 4 5 6 if i keep my cursor the box here i can see a specific value it is nothing but a file path program data see program data uh, a specific uh, some random vbs file name so let me mark it here i'm com i'm committing its value so here i covered the value and the variable 2 the next one replace cells 1072 poi and the random string i'll explain what is replace function before that let's find what is present in cell 1072 so again i am moving to cell or uh, i mean the row 1067 and the column 2 so if i keep my cursor here and i can see some random values so 1072 i'm copying that and uh, pasting it over here so i am simply pasted the contents as comments and let's see what is replace function function in vb script all right now i can see the syntax replace the first one is the string that we need to search and the second uh, the argument is find and the third argument is replace with so this is the thing here they also gave an example so let's see so here is the string call it called as text and uh, they are calling the entire string this is the beautiful day and when they find the particular string beautiful they want to replace it with fantastic so once this two lines executed you can see the output as this is the fantastic day the beautiful is replaced with fantastic so that is the usage of this replace function so let's try the same i am moving to the excel file 
I'm copying the content and putting it inside a separate file. And here in this file, I need to find uh, the string POI and I need to uh, replace it with an empty string, which is nothing but I need to remove all the string uh, that is nothing but POI. So why don't we use Python to do this? So I'm using Python to do this. So in Python, I'm using Python uh, command line environment. So I'm in the Python 3 now. Uh, I'm simply calling a variable called text and putting all those contents within text. So I'm simply enter. So let me correct that. Txt, txt equal single quote. Again, the single quote. So I did that. Now I give text, uh, the entire value stored within the variable text. So what I have to do is I need to replace that, right? So I'm calling text dot replace and I need to specify the string that I need to search and also the replacement string. So let me go to the command line again. And here I'm simply pasting it. So I'm going to find POI and replace it with no line, I mean, uh, empty string. So, and I'm putting the entire thing within the out, the variable called out. Enter. Now let's see what is in the out. Here I can see there is another set of VB script. So let me save it in here and I'm highlighting its syntax. I'm using control shift P to get this particular window where we can choose the syntax that we want. And I'm using VB script. I'm choosing the VB script syntax. Now everything is inside the quotation mark. So I'm removing the quotation. Now I can see. So let me save it. Let me save it uh, as uh, cookie VBS one, cookie VBS one, and uh, yeah, I'm simply saving it. So let it be. Uh, try to read a few other things, and uh, it does certain calculation once again after this uh, specific cell reading operation uh, it is again doing some certain operation on those constant values uh, i don't think it does nothing so i mean i don't think uh, it is doing something uh, simply it does nothing for the obfuscation and the confusing purpose they added these random uh, blobs and let's see the else statement uh, in the else statement i can see another uh, cell reading uh, operation this time again another uh, two sentence concatenation. I'm removing that and put it in separate line. So let's see what is the first way, va first variable, uh, 1172. So let's read that from the Excel document. 1172. So I'm going to 117 row and column two. I can see another path is found. So let me go to that to that VBS script and again storing it. Yeah, here we did. And the next cell reading operation 1152. So this time let's go once again 115 and 2. So if I click, I can see another set of uh, strings. So I'm copying that and uh, Pasting once again. Cells one one five comma two. All right. Now the next one cell one one six two. One one six two. Another blob. So let's go and uh, 
store it at the end cells 116 comma 2 and i can store it here now if i go to view and enable the word wrap i can see all those uh, 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 you know, you know the uh, what? How can I say all those uh, hidden uh, st strings, stored commanded strings uh, in a folded way? Here you can see the nonsense. And uh, let me scroll down further. And uh, it's the end of if statement. Again, looks like uh, it is calling this function here. So here they defined one sub, not function. They defined a sub and they are calling the sub here uh, along with the parameters 4782, variable 1, variable 2 that we have already found variable 1, variable 2. So it's a sub call. So I'm leaving it here. And the next one, range B1. Uh, rather than choosing a specific cell, it is also possible to choose range of cells uh, and here they gave b1 which is nothing but simply it's going to choose only one cell so if i go here and type b1 and enter it will navigate to that specific cell it, it just they uh, you know uh, denotes uh, one cell and it contains nothing there is no value um, and the next sentence is case is greater than or equal to 10,000 and it does something. Uh, seems to be a random uh, meaningless operation here. So this is the end of this sub called workbook open. We literally found some spooky stuffs within this workbook underscore open sub. So let's move to the next one. Uh, and the next sub is uh, a random sub. So why don't I rename this sub? Uh, let me rename it as first valid sub G04, G504. Again, I'm giving and this cell is holding nothing. So there is no content. Again, um, it appears to be some unknown or some not unknown some uh, invalid uh, statement invalid sub statement so let me check this particular cell and i'm simply control pressing control c and it paste uh, i mean the the entire cell block contain a number 2. I don't think it does uh, anything. Again, uh, these are all the code blocks added to confuse the antivirus. That's then true. Cell address false, false. Uh, I think if the address is false, false, and then then it is not an address, so it denotes nothing. Some random strings. Is it base sixty four? Let me paste it inside the quotation base sixty four hyphen d. No, it's nothing. Machine language. Unreadable character. Now let's move to the next one. I don't think it, it, it is doing something. So let's comment this as well. All right.
So I'm commenting out this line as well, the function call. I'm moving to the next one. This function is not called anywhere. So again, it's a blob. I'm committing out this as well. And the next private sub is worksheet selection change. So if I choose the worksheet selection change, I see nothing. So also let's see the cell reference. I'm copying all the cells with cell values and pasting it. I don't see anything. So again, it is it contains nothing. So a set of invalid code blocks. And the next one, control F, it called somewhere. And again, I commented it out. But let's see, is it valid or not? If I see here, uh, it reads a specific cell. So let's go to this 1145, line 114, and the fifth line. If I go here, I can see w script.shell. So it finally gives some stuff, w script.shell. It is calling w script in Windows and uh, What else we can get from here? So these are all the variable definitions. Looks like a function call and uh, Referring a cell. Application dot screen updating false. So let's see what it is. Screen updating is the property of VBA that you can use to turn on and off the screen updating while running the code. So it is like hiding the code execution. So that's what they are they are trying to refer here. So they are doing some, uh, they are setting the screen updating to false. Through this, they can hide their code execution. So that is another uh, notable thing here. And subsequently, they are again setting it to true. So here they are calling some W script, uh, a platform to execute the code. And apart from that, uh, they also using some screen update, the, the hiding uh, mechanism. So let's go further. And again, cell replacement operation. So replace cells 1082, removing NGA. And uh, let's read this 108, comma 2. Let me go here, 108 and comma 2. I can see some random stuff. So let me mark it as a comment. Cells 108 comma, sorry. Cells 108 comma, comma. All right, um, let's go and check for the next one. So this is the end of this sub. Actually, this sub does some crucial thing as it disables the screen update and enables it. After that, it also reads a specific cell. So. How, what can what can we rename? 
second valid sub. So that would be the app name. Second valid sub and replace sub. Perfect. And this is where I'm calling the sub. So this must be uh, the valid function anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, this private sub would be the valid sub anyway. So let me uncomment this. I was wrong. Uh, this private sub is being used to call this second valid sub function. Hence it is valid. All right, now let's see this one. It's being called by the second valid sub and uh, let's see whether it is valid or not. And if I see here, it is reading another cell, 118 comma four. So let's me, let me go there, 118 comma four, 118, two, three, four. So RDS data space. So this is what it contains and let's see what is RDS database here in BB script. The following example shows how to use create object method of the RDS data space with default business object. To test this example, paste the pop. actually uh, here I can see the definition. Data space object and create object method will be screen. Stack overflow. RDS replacement classic ASP. I couldn't spot the valid definition for this. Let's see the uh, another Microsoft link with the same one. Okay. It does something. So if anyone know, please try to comment it out. Comment in the uh, comment section uh, if you know what exactly it is doing. And uh, again, it performs some find operation on the cells. Excel comments. Actually, it look for comment. And uh, what uh, what is this? They defined one public variable here, and again they called this variable to create an object with the stream name and the caption and the stream name dot tag. Uh, Apart from that, here they again called the stream name dot tag to create the object, and uh, it does some uh, alphabetical some operation on this, and again uh, they are comparing this cell dot address string first address. What is present in the string first address? I don't see any value here. So actually, this operator represents not equal. When cell address, cell dot address not equal to string first address, this particular loop, I mean, that is the statement here. So this is the end of this tab, uh, sub. I don't think this sub is doing anything apart from this RDS dot data space since I have no idea. So I'm just leaving it as a valid one. So let's see. So I'm calling this as a third valid sub.
all right so finally we got uh, some data from this we got w script dot shell uh, again this particular string so let's clean this up again i'm using the uh, python 3 to replace characters and again i'm placing it inside a text now i'm holding it in text and i need to replace the nga with empty string so that's what my operation so let's do that txt dot replace again i'm copying this whole thing and pasting it here so now i can see the output it's nothing but w script program data uh, it is calling the vba script so with this command it executes the VB script that we found. So this is the execution command, uh, execution text. So let me place it over here. A sort of uh, indicator of compromise. And uh, let's move to the next one, wscript.shell. And uh, if I go upwards, Here you can see the huge blob that we found. We still need to uncover this. So I'm copying it and pasting it in a separate document. And uh, I'm going to save this document as Pookie VBS 2. Perfect. Pookie VBS 1 is Pookie VBS 2. And uh, I think syntax as VBS 3. All right. Now let's move to the next one. Uh, we found a path where uh, a batch file is getting stored, program data the path is, and uh, the file, yes, duoixo.bbs. So this is the file uh, being called by w script. So this is the file being called. So they are framing the file here and they are calling they are calling this executable so let's see what it is i think i already pasted this particular stuff by clearing the poi so let's read that Yeah, we already did that. We already cleaned, cleaned this particular string. So the cleaned one is here. And all we need to do is we need to clean this one. And I am going to enable the word wrap. And once again, here enabling the word wrap. So copying this line and uh, pasting here and uh, copying this batch script directory and pasting it here. These two IOCs associated with else statement and these two IOCs associated with if statement. Hence, I am clubbing it together for, for the sake of understanding. And at the bottom, we have seen the VB script is being called with the help of W script. W script is the utility to execute the VB scripts in Windows system. So let's move and clear this stuff. So as I said, it is again the VB script. So the colon is here, so it's a new line character. And I'm, I'm putting it in a new line. And uh, again, a new line character is found. And apart from that, uh, I found another new line here. So putting it here in a new line. And 
one more new line and another new line now let's see let's perform this replacement operation here so if i go to if i go here it is calling w script dot create object at replace and uh, replace function again having the string to be replaced and uh, i'm sorry uh, the the whole string and the string to be replaced here so let's perform the same uh, replacement with help of python once again mm. so sorry i'm using the wrong command so again going to python uh, putting it inside the txt variable inside a single quotation single quote um, it is in txt now and uh, let me find this txt and replace replace so inside a double quote and pasting the string that, that has to be replaced comma the empty string and closing it now i found it is nothing but w script dot shell the whole thing is w script dot shell so this is the cleared okay and the next one is replace once again and here once again i am putting it in text txt now contains this new string and i am calling the string to be replaced so now txt dot replace perfect now i got that batch script location The next thing is another replace statement. Once again, I'm putting it in text. PST. Okay, now let's replace it with empty string. PST dot replace. I'm pasting this, closing the bracket. Enter. Oh, here is the spooky thing. So I'm cancelling, I'm, I'm deleting everything and putting a cleaned one. So here it is spawning the command prompt and starting the DLL. Actually, uh, it triggers the DLL, the downloaded DLL with the command prompt. And here is the DLL path. Hmm, pretty slick. And uh, if I go here, I can, I can, I can give the variable name here. So let's try to replace it as command. Looks like these are all base64 encoded strings. Uh, it begins with dir c colon backward slash and ampersand. Ampersand means concatenation operator. Uh, it does concatenate the string. So they simply used to uh, merge those strings uh, simply concatenating. So set is nothing but to set value to a variable. Uh, here they defined a variable and also a value to it. Let me scroll down and at the bottom I can see uh, I also added the, uh, the, the, the random strings that collected from another cell. So let me put it in a different file so that it will be easy to de decode. Uh, I am cutting it and creating a new line 
sorry, new file and uh, pasting it. So let me save it as Poki VBS 3. Perfect. Now let's go here and try to uncover the string. Uh, here, echo after echo, I found a random string. It looks like base 64. Let me decode that. Echo base 64 hyphen D, nothing, unreadable characters. And if I go here, I can see uh, a human readable PO. And after that, again, I'm finding echo after echo some random characters. So let's see this as well. Echo base 64 hyphen D. Again, random characters. So from this, I think the strings uh, next to echo are not readable, some random blobs. So I think we better to remove this uh, string and the echo command. Uh, let's consider the rest of the things. So to remove the subsequent strings to echo, we can use regular expression. And the regular expression is choosing the, uh, the space after echo and the random thing. Now it, it chooses the entire stuff. I don't want to choose the entire thing after the space. Um, let me let me give plus here. No. I want to choose the string subsequent to the echo. So let me keep everything before ampersand. The first occurrence I need to prefer and uh, plus, let me try plus. Ampersand. Somewhere I'm making a mistake in regular expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, these echo and subsequent strings manually. But, but once you are familiar with the uh, regular expression, you can use the regular expression itself to remove such, to perform such operations. And uh, once again, I can see an echo statement removing that and here we are again echo statement removing it got it that's it uh, we removed all those echo statement now let's try to decode this uh, once again uh, we found another echo here so let's remove that as well all right so if i say here it is setting the particular variable to value po and again, it sets particular variable value to WERS. Again, it is setting particular variable, sorry, again, a co statement here. Uh, it is setting particular variable to value as hell. So you can combine these values, PO, WERS, hell, power shell. So that's what they are trying to say here. And uh, let me uh, decode this as well. They are just giving the value to this variable as nc space and this random strings. So let me decode this base64. Echo, putting it inside a colon, base64 hyphen d. So here we found some valid uh, command. Looks like we found some URL here. So here we, here we found the the IOC, the critical IOCs. So I am simply replacing this with the URL. I think
yeah let me replace this and uh, now here we are and again there is a variable name and uh, some random strings so let me catch that string until the next time percent once again i'm decoding the base 64 base 64 hyphen d all right again we got some urls copying that and pasting here perfect now the next variable the next value till the next time percent okay now let's do the same base 64 hyphen d collecting the url and replacing it all right and the next thing is the last set okay now now we accomplished the command so if i see the semi uh, the, the double quote begin here and the double quote ends here and it all split it with comma so let me bring it to the new line because the semicolon denotes the line end line termination Now here we are, we simply un uncovered uh, the encoded strings. So after uncovering, we were, we were able to see, let me remove this base 64 as well. After uncovering, we found uh, it is setting some value to the variable. It is calling PowerShell hyphen E and C, it encoded. Uh, all these strings into base 64 so that is why hyphen e and c actually it is executing the encoded strings so once it does uh, uh, it, it is simply going to uh, call all these urls and here i can see invoke web request invoke web request is a powershell command let to uh, send the web request to these urls and also hyphen uri uh, that to the variable specific variable and if I see this particular statement, uh, for each, uh, actually it is iterate, uh, iterating through this particular uh, list. So this is the list. So I'm simply going to replace it with URL. Once again, let me control FH and uh, URL list. Now let's write uh, a simple Python program to detect the validity of these URLs, okay? So let me uh, take these URLs first and uh, I'm gonna put it in a new document. Again, enabling code wrap. Uh, here, I need to remove the unwanted set, set keyword and all. So let me remove that. All right. Now it looks perfect. So let me copy this and uh, again I'm opening Python 3. From here, I'm putting it inside the text. 
variable all right and i need to split everything with comma so let me do that txt dot split split comma now i got the outcome here again putting it inside the file here you can see actually it is in python list format the first member of the list the second member of the list and the list member present inside the quotation mark and it is separated by comma and everything is inside a square bracket so it's a python list so let me highlight the syntax here so it's a python list and i am naming this as a list all right now i need to send web request to these urls so i am importing library called requests okay so i just imported the library request and i need to iterate through this list so for that i am using or and i am defining a variable called url here for url in list i am iterating uh, one by one uh, and i need to send the uh, request to these urls so for that i am going to use i am going to call the request library dot get url and i am simply putting this outcome in a variable called r okay now now what i need to do is uh, i need to uh, define uh, a condition here if r dot status code and that is the uh, method to uh, to find the status code of the response equal to 200 the valid status code then i need to print that specific url is valid so this is what my simple python code and i am saving it as web requester dot py and pressing control b in sublime text to uh, execute that so once i do i am able to see the python's code is sending the web request and is and it is giving the url status here if it is valid then it is it, it displays the url name i mean it displays the url and its status and it also throws some error because i failed to handle the exception but for the sake of displaying uh, this is more than enough i found these urls are valid so let me copy this url one by one and uh, try to uh, fetch the file what is uh, being downloaded in that so let me get that wget i'm using utility wget to download the file i'm, I'm sorry uh, the typo it downloaded something and st index.html if i apply file comment against that it's a html document it is simply uh, moving to a web page so again it is not the dll file that we want and let, let me check the next one w get once again and i'll remove this index.html rm hyphen rf and uh, the next url w get utility once again download a certain oh sorry file utility again it's a html document i'm removing it and uh, the next one the next url so w get once again connected file utility ascii text let me trigger this fire html file with firefox
So this is the web page displays. Nothing useful. So removing this. And the next URL. <coughs> RM, sorry. Duplicate once again. Oh God, my bad. Duplicate. Now we can see a specific file is being downloaded and the file a size is 1.02 MB. So let me try to get the file type here. Uh, yeah, here you can see. It is PE32 executable DLL file. DLL is nothing but a library file in Windows operating system. Actually, uh, it's Intel 80368, the processor, the architecture, and uh, also the MS Windows. It's, a, it's an executable file. So this is the DL that we wanted, I guess. So it is downloaded as index.html, but what our code is doing means, let me, let me go to this VBS script. So it downloads, it probes each and every URL. I found, we found this particular URL is valid and downloads the DLL. So once it found the valid DLL, what it does, it simply uh, rename the file as vbkwk.dll and place it in the program.data. And later it, it tried to execute this uh, vbkw, I mean vbkwk.dll file. So from here, the infection will begin. So, so that is, that's the thing we wanted to know. So if we go here, you can see uh, the execution of the DLL in detail. Here we found the DLL file uh, and it does some run DLL 32. Uh, it does some injection, I guess, but I'm not sure uh, this particular file is responsible for uh, the DLL execution, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's what it, uh, it's being done. BBKWK, the file name. BBKWK, yeah, exactly. So let's see what it is. XWB, sorry, X0B. I think it is V. So let's see. Go to Cyberchef. From hex. This dot, it is simply dot. So yeah, pretty much. So this is the code responsible for executing the DLL. Now we found the DLL. So let's go to terminal. We found the DLL named as index.html. I'm opening it with sublime text and I can see only the compiled format, the machine language. So if I go to and open it in the hex edit, I think I have the hex term. Hex term, the application is there. So hex term, index.html, it is dumping the hexadecimal format. So let me rename index.html to the same file name. Now we renamed it. So we got the suspicious spooky DLL file. So let me upload this file in the virus total and see what sort of malware it is. Choose file, issue email, vbkwk.dll. Boom, here you can see. Uh, 32 vendors out of 66 found it as malicious. And if I go to community, I can see uh, what type of malware it is. It is nothing but emoted. Emoted. What is emoted? Mm, let's read that. Emoted. Emoted. What is emoted malware and how to protect it yourself? Let's read it in the Wikipedia page. Emoted is a malware strain 
and a cyber crime operation believed it to be based in ukraine the malware is also known as hudo was detected in 2014 actually uh, emotet is one of the popular malwares used to distribute other malwares so uh, so so far we have analyzed a simple email and we found an excel xls i mean uh, uh, an excel document suspicious excel document which contained macros and once you open the document is execute the vbe script vbe script at the back end and it pulls the dll file and it also triggers the dll file it places the dll file somewhere uh, in a secure uh, location in c drive and it executes the dll file and this dll files perform certain operation and if you go and if you open this dll file in gitra you will be able to understand you will be able to uh, you can you can re uh, reverse that file and you can understand what is the functionality it is doing but that is the technique that is the concept that i need to learn further uh, i'm trying to learn uh, the reverse engineering and uh, uh, the binary analysis so uh, Uh, so far as a, as a first video as a first real time malware analysis video this would be more than enough so we 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 just dealt with uh, a critical emotet malware and you can also see how easily it is spreading it is uh, establishing a uh, footprint on the victim network so this is it so this is all uh, i wanted to share i really hope we had some special learning session today so i hope you really enjoyed this so don't hesitate to subscribe my channel and uh, hit the like button put your comment in the comment section so that i can read and enhance my skills and i can take your inputs i'm ready to take so i'll catch you next time with another excellent concept until then i'm signing off love you guys